Okay, so let's just set the last little bit around there just to level that one up. Just on that pencil mark. The pencil mark's just disappeared now. I can't see any more pencil mark. I can get a fairly decent smooth finish with a file like that. Certainly as smooth as I want it to be. I don't really need it to be any smoother than that, really. That's, that's quite good, that. It really is. I've taken a bit off the top as well there. Um, and I've taken that mark off the, the bottom there. That's one you're so patiently waiting for for me. So all I now, to, now need to do is make the holes. You'll notice that those templates that he's done for me there. Um, uh, oops, <laughs> that's a coin. That's not a template. I don't know what I'm There it is. Yeah, these templates here, they do have um, holes in them, all marked out. And you can see the circle there and the lines, you know, which is brilliant. But I tend not to use them, to be honest with you, because I can see by eye, really, a better way of doing it is just to find the centre like that and mark them down from there so there's one and then here's the other one here just down there like that okay All right. and then do the same on this one here again sort of just just here uh, just enough of a mark for the drill to be able to go in there. <laughs> now, I find this quite a small hole to go into to drill with the uh, hand drill. Uh, and I have to go level with it so in order to keep it so that I can reach I use a little sort of like hobby drill to be able to go through there makes it a bit easier for me to go through this is a sort of a sample one this really I mean, it, the, the um, I needed some sharpening doing that's why I got that dork on there just there which I'm not happy about also um, uh, the, the, the um, scraper that I got it's got a slight line on it and it's left a mark on there and a mark on there. I'm not, I'm not really happy with those. So I'm just going to use this as an example to show you how to make one. This isn't one really that I'd be sending out. This is just sort of a, a sample one to sort of give you an idea how to make one really. I, I haven't sort of taken that much care of the finishing because I want to sort of get through it really. But uh, anyway, I'll just uh, put in my, uh, my drill, which is here. And then I'll show you how we finally finish that by it's all the way I do it anyway it's just I find it a lot easier I can set it up on here I've done that before um, fitted it all into there and then drilled it down but with such a small drill it's so easy just to uh, catch it you know but uh, if I watch it go through go through there why isn't my drill working uh, why isn't that working I plug the right thing in no, no, it not worked before what on earth wrong with that Oh, all right. I don't know what that was. It's been temperamental. It's obviously got stage fright like the rest of us today. So, put that through there. It's just so I can see it come through the other side there, you see. So, it's easier to do just by doing it like this. There we go, just to come through there. I did work that a little bit, get it through. There were two millimetre holes, very, very thin piece of string that went through here. You think about it, there isn't actually much space to play with through there anyway. So, once it's gone, just lower this down so I've got something to steady it again. That's it. Okay. So, if you think about it, that top there is about 32 mil, And the, um, uh, the, um, the, the base underneath there is about 20-something, I don't know. Anyway, you've only got about, you've got about 4 millimetres each side to play with. So, if you're doing a 2 millimetre hole, you've only got 2 millimetres either side of that hole. So... Uh, you do have to be sort of fairly careful about how this goes in, otherwise it'll mark it. Now, theirs were marked. You know, they had gone through. They had damaged the bottle underneath. I made a bit of a mess of it that way. Oh, I could do that, but I just don't like to do that. It doesn't seem to me to be the best way to demonstrate it. So, this drill, like I said, it's only a hobby drill, so it doesn't have um, you know, uh, any sort of um, parts to it where I can get sort of... It's certainly not like a pillar drill or, you know, what you might call a press drill. So... I can't get a definite angle on there, I can only do it by rack of eye, and also it's not got a great deal of torque to it, so you can see if I do any pushing at all it just slows down incredibly, so you either burn your way in there slowly but surely, 
Yeah, or you just sort of like hammer action it in and out. Yeah, sort of like breaking the fibers slightly each time. There you go, and that's through there. The, the important thing is that you don't push it too far, and it goes all the way through. Well, there's our completed bottle now. Like I say, I'm not happy with it really. I mean, I'd like to have finished that a little bit nicer than that. This is not one that would be going out really. I don't suppose you've got a few lines in there. I tell you what, though, it's ten times better than any of those I looked at in Leeds Armouries. They really were absolutely awful. But I, I, I like to have mine a lot smoother than that. I really do. It's dead easy to cheat. You could just sand that around. You just put sand on it, and just let it go around. I don't do that. I never do that with any of mine. I skew only mine. I, I only skew mine. That's the thing. But anyway, um, new lathe's just been moved position, so it's banging about a little bit. So I'm getting a little bit of rocking now. I need to sort of stabilise the, the lathe a little bit more now. I've got it into the new position. But there's one or two people that wanted to see um, how I make the bottles that I'm um, uh, sending out at the moment. I've got quite a few people um, that are interested in these. Here's one um, that I made some time ago. This is one that's just um, it's got a. Um, a basically, it's got it's a primer. This one, so I, I've stuck a little. Uh, bung in there um, I, you know it's, it's just something I've created that here's another one as well this is one that I've done out of ash um, same way as you can see you know it sort of looks quite these are actually rejects by the way these you notice the the neck of that is a little bit thicker than I want it to be uh, this one I can't remember why I rejected oh yes the, the the neck there is just a little bit too thin there these are just rejects but it gives you an idea anyway the kind of finish that you can get and these have been um, dipped in oil three times as per the regulations as well now they are ash and this one here is beach so it will come up slightly differently but at the end of the day it will darken slightly and bring out that grain and they do look rather nice I think you know um, following the, the actual instructions from the period now that is incredibly light as well by the way because of all that hollowing that's been done inside there you know so quite a handy little thing it'll hang on string and it'll hang from a belt like so like this around the uh, the musketeer's bandolier there you know so he can get his um his uh, powder charges out of that so okay well i hope that's been informative so at least you know the process of making it um uh, the ones that you'll see that i'll um put forward for people if, if they want if they do want any of these uh, will be uh, better condition than this, but at least you've got an idea of how they're put together. <laughs> okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, uh, we've got a belt being made up at the moment, so with a bit of luck, in a few days, I might have a load of these hanging on a belt I can show you. Usually, when I do them, they go out fairly quickly, so I don't have a chance to sort of hang on to anything, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to present um, some on a belt for you as well. Right. Well, I'm back upstairs. I'm out of the workshop. Uh, this is one that I've just found upstairs, actually. Um, it's one that I turned before. Um, if you see on this one, you know, the nib and the lid there, you can tell that, that it's not been um, uh, that it's not been drilled out, you know, because you can see that nib in there. So it's a smarter example. This is one that I made that I wasn't, I wasn't being watched on the camera, basically, so I felt a little bit more comfortable about it. You can see how, kind of, you know, that that's going to be hanging from... Uh, from the the soldier's belt and um, just as an example of that I, I thought I'd give you the book you know this is the, uh, the the best book I think really for finding out about this I, I think it's out of print at the moment but Osprey do bring their books back into print every now and again this is the chap who used to be the um, curator at the at the armories there so I'll just show you here some of the examples of the bandoliers that he's taken pictures on this is the one that drove me to go and have a look at the armories just to check because I wasn't absolutely certain from the drawings in here if they were wholly accurate and of course really they're, they're not because the um well they are in a way let's qualify that okay first of all you can see down in here these are uh, original drawings and you could see the uh, the bandolier hanging here with all the bottles or the charges um from the collar of charges here with a little purse that's on there as well and uh you know you can see how they're all um how they all hang from from the belt there in um individual sort of um the strung individually i should say so there's one example um there's another example here this is closer up this is actually i think these are made of tin and then covered in velvet something like that so not not a brilliant example of um of turned ones but um uh, oh no, that's the tin one, actually. Um, but over here you can see uh, one of the belts in the Leeds Armouries, pictured here. Um, you've already seen the ones that I've had on there, but, uh, you know, from um, uh, from my visits to the Leeds Armouries. This is one that the curator took as part of this book at the time. Similar design to the ones that I've got on here now as well. And on here you can see a diagram of the, um, of I think he says this is a Scottish set or something. And you'll see a cross-section. And the cross-section here, he shows that it's simply been... Board 
down there straight, which I certainly didn't find that to be the case when I went to Leeds Armies, and that's what made me think that perhaps this is, is not quite accurate, but maybe he's measured a set that is bored down like that. I really don't know. If you read through the, the bump in this book, I don't know if you can see it there on that page, but it will tell you the specifications as well. It must be turned, not bored, and dipped in oil three times. So um, I think um, because I'm sort of promoting this book and it's out of print anyway, I don't think I can be done for any copyright on this. But um, basically, it's just to let you know that um, a lot of the information is contained in here about the English ones. There are um, other various accounts over on the internet where people have gone and looked at them throughout Europe as well. So just to give you an example of where all this has come from, and you can see that mine are not um, massively different. Certainly the outside is very much the same as the ones that you can see on these bottles here. The only difference really is the fact that mine are hollowed and they haven't followed this sort of um, uh, bore that you can see down there. So just to give you an idea, basically, of um, uh, what's out there so you can find the information for yourself. If you care to make a treadle lathe, Moxon, Joseph Moxon Online, does give you all the details about how to do that as well. Quite complicated, quite a long process as well, but uh, it's entirely up to you. But um, uh, Okay, well, I, I just thought I'd um, add a little bit to what I've shown in terms of the turning because... Um, uh, I thought, well, I'm, I'm not sure I like the, the fact that you're looking at a demonstration example rather than a more finished example uh, than this would be. And of course you can see as well, once it's come up, the cap, like that, um, it sits up there. This is a 2 mil hole. And then you can always put that cap down quite easily when you refill it with powder. But when you're on the battlefield, it's hanging from the belt. You flick it up like that. You then know that one has had the powder used out of it. That's the whole idea of it. That's the, um, uh, the basis for the whole thing. Some of them are twisted as well, like this, and then waxed. You know, so it holds that collar even tighter there as well in place. There are all sorts of different ways that people string these and theories about how they were strung together. And that will be hung from the belt there, like I just said before. OK, so finished example. So it might look a bit better for you. Strung up um, with um, a better one to look at.